<laughs> you have a better sense with smoke of both the running back and special teams of, of how to use him, where he fits, and what kind of things he can do now? No doubt. I mean, you, you, you take a look at just the experience that he got last year and the spring that he had, just the, the available availability and, and the, the things that really he can bring to us. Uh, you know, I think that really only comes with a year of experience on his part and my part. I really do. How do you envision ideally divvying up sort of those roles with Kevin as the sort of featured back and, and Smoke as? as well, how, do you, how do you divvy that up? How do you envision? That's a, that you know that's a good question. Uh, how do you? I mean, you got three pretty good backs right there. You got two seniors with with Kevin and and Kalik, and you add uh, uh, Smoke to that list. You know, to me, that's a good problem to have. Um, and and the good thing about it is I think we can save their legs. And, and not really wear one guy out so that we can make it through a season, you know, and, and keep all of them healthy. But there's a role that they all can play. They can all help us win. And as a staff, offensively, we're going to be creative on how we use them and, and to get them on the field because they all can make plays for us. Steve mentioned wanting to add, obviously, more of an explosive element. When you look at the backs that you have, uh, are there guys there that are capable of – you know, even if the play maybe isn't set up to be a big one, they can make somebody miss and turn something into something? Well, I think e each of them has something special about them that, that allows them to do that. You look at Kevin, he's, he's got more power. He's, he's going to, you know, uh, grind it out on you. As, you. as you saw, you know, that's how he gained 1,000 yards. They weren't all pretty yards, you know, and they weren't all breakaway. Whereas you look at, at Smoke and Kalik, they've got the ability to really, in space, make you miss. You know, so you take a look at those guys. They're great space guys, and and they still have the strength to, to you know to power through you. But but I think they have the ability to take the distance. Uh, talking about space guys, um, it, 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 a guy like Kev, uh, excuse me, uh, Smoke is he? Are those guys like that born as far as kick returners go, or is it something that has to be developed? And, and what's what has opened your eyes about uh, his abilities to return kicks? Well, the first thing you look at speed, downhill speed. That's the first thing I look at in kick returners. I think that's why Darius Jennings is good also because he has that downhill ability to hit it and accelerate through the hole as it, as it makes happen. Um, because in kickoff return especially, you're not looking for a guy that's going to shift and, and that you're looking for a downhill. Punt return, you're looking for that shifty, uh, a guy that can make you miss and then get vertical, which I think, you know, as you take a look at, at Smoke and, and Kalik, those kids have that ability. Where does your uh, place taking situa situation stand? Well, I think we're in, in really good hands. I thought Ian Fry had a tremendous uh, spring. You know, and, and I think he started well last fall. Uh, had he not got hurt, I think he'd have had a real good year. Uh, but he had a he came back and had a great spring. And, and to have Alex uh, back him up or be that guy, again, I think I have two pretty good kids in, in that position as far as the place kicking goes. Larry, how did you evaluate the blocking on the two return teams last season, and how do you improve on that when you can't really go live, or you don't go live a lot in practice? Well, so I think you, what I try to do is I try to take a look at, at what kids can move in space. You know, as you take a look at special teams, it's all about movement in space, the ability to block and tackle in open open space. And I think that we have, you know, as you take a look at our team overall, I think we have more kids – uh, maybe uh, more depth at some of those positions than we did a year ago. You know, so as I take a look at that, I look at what kids can move in space, who can block and tackle in space, and then try to get those kids onto the field for us, whether they're starters, not starters. You know, I don't, I don't really look at that, but I do look at, at their abilities of, of what I need, and I think we have better depth and better experience. I know the one thing that I've learned over the years that usually in my second year, you know, kids kind of understand the system and the terms and the technologies and really the techniques that we're using. And I think because of that, we'll, we'll be better. You talked about splitting up the reps a little bit running back-wise. Kevin had about 18, 19 carries a game last year. Is that something that you still want from him or – do you, do you set a number? I, like I want that for all the backs. 
you know, I want them all to have carries because I think I think that uh, they have that ability. It's not so much a number as it is the play call. I really I really believe that. Uh, you know, and, and sometimes kids will, will get it going. You know, you don't want to pull a kid out when he's hot either. Uh, uh, you know, so I think there's certain situations that, that kids will get hot and get going. You want to kind of stay with them and let them get into the rhythm a little bit too. You know, so, you know, it could be by series. Uh, you know, again, those, those are things that, again, it's a, it's a challenge, uh, you know, because I know they all want to carry the ball and, and uh, that, you know, that's what makes them happy. So there's a challenge, I think, on the offense for us to, to continue to be creative for all those kids to get them on the field because they can all make plays for us. Coach, more guys have the shifty speed and skills to be a punt returner than do it well. I think the thing that seems to separate the ones that do it well is kind of a stupid fearlessness. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can have 11 guy, guys running down you like that. I would be too. Do you have a guy like that who you know, will give you a heart attack when he catches it and decides to return it but then can turn it into something? Yeah, I think, I think we do. I really do. I, I, I think that Smoke is developing that. Uh, I think Kalik uh, Shepard – uh, has the quickness and, and the ability, and, and I don't think either one of those two. Uh, I think they're. I think they're both fearless. Uh, I think it's just a matter of experience for them, getting them out there. But I think those are the kind of guys that, that I'm looking for. Number one, catch the ball, and those two have tremendous hands. You know, that's that's the biggest thing. As you look at punt return, your your first goal is to get the ball back. Your second one then is to gain 10 yards. Your third is then have a guy that's your ability. Once that 10 yards hits, to be able to make something happen and, and go the distance. Larry, uh, how do you, as a former head coach, how do you think Mike has handled the hot seat, so to speak? And, <laughs> and what do you, what do you say to people? And you know, it's, it's, I'm, I'm guessing a lot of people ask you about it, n not knowing you know what's going on in the inner workings. But how do you respond to people, recruits, friends? How do you deal with it? You know, I, th I think you just have to believe in what you're doing. And, and we believe in, in our process. We believe in our kids, our team, our direction. And I think you just have to, you have to kind of uh, forget about that and, and really just stay the course of, of what you believe in, who you believe in, you know, and, and surround the, yourself with the guys that, that you're with. Get everybody on the same board and, and get on that train and go. But you got to believe in it and, and stay it. And that's what Mike has done a tremendous job of, of, of just sticking the course and believing in what we do. Virginia Tech, Coach Beamer said he's seen a change in recent years with more protection on punts and sort of an emphasis then on returning it because it's harder to block them. Uh, have you seen a similar trend or, or what have you seen changing in that aspect? You know, the, the nature of the, the shield punt is hard to get to it. Every now and then, and, and we were fortunate last year to get to a couple, um, but usually it's a, it's a muff snap or, or some, something happens mechanically. A guy misses a block. Um, but the nature of the spread or the uh, shield punt really is hard to get to, so they're, they're, uh, more emphasis is put in the return game and trying to get, get good returns. Now, the flip side of that is the coverage ability of the shield has really taken away a lot of the returns also because punters are getting better. You see that the hang time, uh, of punters nationally in the last five years has really, really increased because they're given the time to to really step and get the ball off. You know, so so coverage time. You're getting six guys down rather than just two. Uh, so coverage time is less now. So really, as you look at the, the punt return game as a whole, has kind of been nullified a little bit. I mean, it really has. Coach, you were just talking about the mentality of kind of staying the course and believing in what you believe in and what you're doing. Is there a part of you, though, that looks at the schedule and says, holy crap, whose idea was this? this is, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's I, a pretty – Yeah, it's, every year. <laughs> it's pretty much a gauntlet this year, it looks like. Well, it, yeah, it is. In, and, again, if you – those are things that are out of uh, – really out of our control. And to worry about them is really a waste of time. So let's put our focus and our attention on what we got to do to get this team better. And, and move in the right direction, not worry about who we play, but worry about how we play. And I think that's really got to be our focus as we go into this is, is you know, you, you can set yourself up for failure worrying about, oh, this, this team's all this and all that, whereas let's just worry about us. Let's worry about us getting better. Let's continue to stay, take steps forward in what we do and just get better and better every day. 
Coach, could you, we, we've talked about the increasing comfort level and familiarity with, of the players with the schematics that they're being asked now in, in year two of the program and how that's going to impact things. Could you talk about the, the increased familiarity that the coaching staff has with each other and also uh, Coach Fairchild's mentioned uh, that you guys have a, had a year now of, of being able to evaluate your personnel both uh, in practice and now in game situations as well? Uh, you know, I think the, the year experience is huge. You know, as you take a look at especially our offensive staff for the most part as, as we came in last year, we're all fairly new. I mean, we're trying to get to know those kids. They're trying to get to know us. There is a learning curve as you, as you step into a situation. It takes some time. It really does. And, and I know as an offensive staff, we feel a lot more comfortable because we do know the kids and, and they know us and they know what's expected of them. We know what we can expect out of them. And I think that's the same way with me in, in special teams. I walked into a situation of, you know, trying to really get to know the abilities of all these kids. And now a year later, I know what certain kids can do, what they can't do, what positions I can put them in. It really helps. It really does. And I, and I think it helps the kids to, to kind of know us a little bit too in, in our personalities. So I think that in itself has helped us uh, both on the offense and the special teams really take a step forward farther than we were at this point last year, no doubt. Larry, is there a role for Ham in the offense or on special teams, or there's just too many guys ahead of him right now? You know, I, I think there is a role. Uh, you know, we have the availability because Daniel Ham uh, was it, we were able to redshirt him last year. So here's a kid that has a hundred yard game under his belt. Okay, he's got a, a game experience and redshirted. I think that's that's the best of all worlds right there. So now. Uh, it, at any point, we can plug him in, but definitely on special teams. Uh, just watching him do some things here in the last couple of days. Uh, here's a young man that's athletic. He's physical. Uh, again, finding, finding ways to get him on the field and get him some experience as we go. Because I think there's a good young back for, you know, for our future who has a, a game experience. Coach, we, we're talking about depth at the running back position. Lachaston Smith seems to be a kind of a change of pace guy. He's kind of the biggest, strongest of the of your bunch right now. What what can be his role uh, this season for you guys? Well, I, I think you mentioned it right there. Uh, you know, more of a power type of a runner, maybe a protection type of a guy. But also, again, he's got to factor in special teams. You know, you look at guys that are at any position, guys that are second, third. Uh, fourth team, if they're going to travel and if they're going to have a, a role, we've got to take a look at them in the special teams areas first. And that's kind of what we're doing right now is, is trying to find out of those kids, which ones can I count on at this point to, to, to start? Because, uh, and really, that, that's what really happens with kids. The, the light kind of turns on, hey, I'm not going to play here. So I'm going to focus my attention maybe on special teams a little bit more because I know I'm going to get some, some PT. Uh, you know, and once that light turns on, then uh, that, that's when I'm able to grab those kids and really make something of them. Does his background as a linebacker in high school and kind of the, the, maybe the physical nature of, of his past, does that help you in terms of being able to plug him in different spots? I think so, yeah. Yeah, because he is a f physical kid. He's strong. Uh, there are certain things that he, that he does really, really well. And really, as you look at LeChaston, he's got good speed too. He kind of has a good mix of, of speed and power. Your punter, first of all, you ever seen a, a punter kind of attack the weight room like uh, like Alec does? And then, <laughs> uh, secondly, just how comfortable are you with him? A guy with so much experience, and he mentioned he wants to be number one in the ACC this year. Do you feel like he has the, the tools to do that? I want him to be number one in the ACC this year. There's no doubt about it. Does he have the tools? Yeah. Yeah, if we can give him the protection, give him the time to do what he does. You know, that's that's really why I have stuck with, with the system that, that we have, because it it allows uh, Vaz the opportunity to do what he does best. And, and I think that, uh, I don't know that there's a better competitor, uh, whether it's a punter or any, any position, he's a great competitor. That's why I'm able to take him from a punter and throw him in as a kicker at any point and know that I can count on him because I trust him. Can you bench press more, any, any more than the running backs? Pound per pound, he can probably bench press more than anybody. <laughs> Because I think pound for pound, he's probably one of the strongest kids on our team. Coach, you talked about the ability of players to not only tackle in space, but also be able to block in space. What, what do you look for in a kid who can do that? Or what, it, what separates the guys who can do those kind of things in space versus some of the guys who may not be as adept at doing that? Well, as you take a look at, at ability-wise, it, it really is, is uh, the ability to move your feet. 
you know, and, and, and your balance and your body control as you're in space. And I have a number of drills that, that we do that, that shows that. Now, if a kid can't move in space as well, there are still positions uh, within special teams that you can, you can put a young man that maybe he doesn't have to be maybe the space guy as much as he can be a straight on let's go guy. And we need some of those guys too. So as you, as you look at it and evaluate those kids, I think you just take a look at their talents and then you plug them into what they do best because not everybody's going to be a great space kid. Um, so you try to put those kids in a position that they're able to make the play when possible, and the other ones maybe to knock out the interference uh, because they've got to be go guys too. I mean, we've got to have some guys up there that want to go. Larry, I know it's early in his career and you haven't seen him a lot because of injuries, but does Smoke remind you of anybody else you've coached or been around in your career? You know, he's he's uh, he's kind of a combination of a couple guys. You know, you take a look at uh, Stefan at, at uh, Nevada. Uh, he was the second leading rusher, I think, in the country for, for a while, maybe first. Uh, but he has that ability with more speed. Uh, Stefan was a little bit more physical at this point, but, you know, he was a – uh, going into his his fourth year at that point, you know, so I kind of take a look at that uh, of a guy like Stefan with more speed. Just kind of overall thoughts of where the running back position is is heading is is changing. I mean, no first round pick this year, that type of thing. And where does a guy like Kevin Parks, you know, where does his game go to the next level because you know some of those smaller guys you know um again i can't control what the nfl does uh the only thing that we can control really and 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 we've talked with kevin he just got to be his best and then what the nfl does they do you know he just has to give it everything he's got which he does on every play and then it's up to them to make that decision i mean it really is and and i think there's systems that everybody fits in but, you know, that's kind of in the NFL's hands. The only thing he can control is how he plays this year and what he does. Are you surprised no first-round pick in that position? Uh, <laughs> you know, as you take a look at the, the running backs throughout the nation, though, you know, I, you know, I don't know. You know, I think maybe that's just kind of a year-by-year -year thing. And, and really, a need position, you know, as you're looking at, at every draft year, what, what's the biggest need of, of some team? So I just think sometimes it's, it's uh, hit, hit or miss, I mean, what do teams need? Any other questions for Coach Lewis? Really? You were right. They didn't ask the most important question. <laughs> well, there's a long snapper, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say. It's, it's a battle right now. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, when, when uh, Matt left us, it kind of left us in a position of too late to recruit at that point because signing day was already over. Uh, and in a position of, of uh, not trying to find a guy, we've got a couple guys that have the ability. It's just refining the ability that they have and deciding on which one's going to be the most consistent at this point. Because I think we have a couple kids that, that again, are as good as kids I've had in the past uh, as far as their velocity and, and, and those kind of things. We're just refining that right now to find out that, again, the, the biggest part is consistency. Can you get the ball right there to Vaz so Vaz can do what he does on a consistent basis over and over and over? And I, I think that's where it's at right now. Well, you're looking at, at – uh, 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 Tyler Shirley, um, you're looking at Furch and, and Jeb Byrne are the three guys right now. And, and, and really, uh, uh, young man that walked on, Spaziani, kid uh, came out and worked at it a little bit yesterday, and he's got some real good velocity. Uh, again, it's, it's a matter of getting those guys, training them for the consistency part of it. He will be. We're, we're kind of letting him get his – well, it, it, no, it's not, it's not that at all. We're going to play the best kids. Uh, but he's really kind of focusing on being a tight end right now. But when I uh, watched him when he came to camp a year ago, he definitely has the ability to do it if he can handle both situations.